It's conference championship weekend. We got the Heisman. We got the college football playoff. All that's going to be talked about on today's episode of The Extra Point, which starts right now. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Extra Point. I'm your host, Griffin Barfield, back in the host chair. And today with me, I got five incredible panelists, and they're excited to talk some college football. And with me now, um, I got Angela Fellowberty. I got Luke Beard making his first time on The, on the Extra Point. Toby Corriston, Daniel Dungan, and Brian Warner. Guys, welcome to the show. And we got plenty to talk about. I know they're excited to get, get talking about these games. So why don't we just jump right into it? So... We're going to start off. There are five, I believe, yeah, the conference five, five championship games that we'll be talking about today. Huge college football playoff implications, huge New York Six Bowl implications, and it starts on Friday night when number four Washington rematch, the huge rematch between them and number six Oregon. And once again, probably the winner will make it to the college football playoff. Does Oregon get revenge or does Washington beat them twice this season? Who wants to start? I would start. I see this kind of as like the golden ticket, like you know the Charlie Brown thing where it's like if you find the golden ticket, you win. Like that's essentially. I thought that was Charlie Wonka. Charlie Wonka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie, yeah. Charlie Brown's Charlie Brown. got Charlie the Brown. rock in his bag. It didn't yeah. quite work out, but this is basically if you win, you're pretty much it. Like that's it, right? I know I'm cracking everyone up. It's a Wednesday. We're ready to go back. But um, I'm gonna go Oregon. I'm just gonna get to the question. I'm gonna go Oregon. Uh, Washington's really good. They've been able to. Find, somehow find a way to win against Washington State, Arizona State, all these th really close games. But Oregon's just on such a hot streak. I mean, Bo Nix is looking phenomenal. Penix has kind of cooled down a little bit, but not too much. I mean, still find a way to win, so I'm going to go Oregon. I'll okay. stick with the Oregon train. Yeah. They've been looking a lot better as the season's progressed than Washington has, and it's hard to beat a team twice. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick with Oregon. I'm going to go Oregon for all of those exact reasons as well. I mean, they are – on the hot streak and I don't think they will be able to or I don't think Washington will be able to beat them two times in a row this year especially after how close it was last game I'm breaking the trend I, I hometown for I lived there for a bit I gotta go Washington um I do think this is going to be a very close game. Oregon could run away with it. I don't see Washington running away with it. But if it's a close game, Washington has found a way to win those games. They found a way to beat Oregon the first time. I think they can find a way to beat Oregon the second time. And Michael Penix is still a great quarterback. He has cooled down, but he is slinging the ball well. Their offense is always going to put up points, especially if the other offense is putting up points. I see Washington eking out another win. Yeah, I'm going Washington, too. My head's saying Oregon, my heart's saying Washington, and I would like to see Washington go undefeated. Uh, Penix is one of my favorite quarterbacks in college football, just off of his, his play style. Uh, he's tenacious. He's, it's a really gritty team, this Washington team. They are super, just super gritty. They know how to pull out wins, and um, I think you need to do that in conference championships, and I've seen Oregon get tested once this year. That was against Washington. They lost that game, and I wouldn't be shocked. I do have a quick question. Like you guys, obviously, being in Washington, how big of a home field advantage was it for the Oregon team? Do you think it was huge? Like, did that play, a, or do you think it was just the Washington team itself? It's I'm a, just curious. I it's mean, a tough Washington place team. to play. Yeah. Um, but I, I think it played into it a little bit. But I don't think it being not a home game for Washington will play into it at all because it's a neutral site. If you had to go to it's Eugene, right? That's where yeah. the Oregon played. Yeah. If you had to yeah. go to Eugene. That would be a tough place, but it's going to be 50-50. Both sides are going to be loud. I don't think it's going to affect I say both me. teams travel well, like their fans. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, especially to the Pac-12 championship. And, and it's, it's, a, it's in Las Vegas, so Washington has to travel a little yeah, bit further. It's also, not, not last, not really. it's it's also the last Pac-12 championship, too. Yeah, yeah exactly. Again, this is for it. all the yeah. marbles, and all the marbles ever. Yeah, yeah. It's Everything's on the line for both teams. Yeah, I really wouldn't say the, the home field for Washington had a big advantage. Washington's won everywhere this year. They're undefeated yeah. for a reason. And I think, you know, going to Vegas is another game for them. It's a business. Uh, it's, it's business. And Washington's a team that's handled business every game. 
I mean, yeah, Washington may be standing on business a little bit, but yeah, I think the perfect ending to, you know, the Pac-12, it's in Vegas, the cap, the huge betting capital of the world, that money will be all over there. And you got two teams, winner, like Brian said, gets the golden ticket, goes into the college football playoffs. So I'm going to be excited Friday night. That's what I'm going to be doing. So uh, we'll see what happens for sure. Next up, the Big 12 championship, another college football playoff contender in Texas will take on number 20 or Oklahoma State in, I don't think they've played this year. I think I don't think they have. But um, both teams, very interesting. Obviously, Ollie Gordon with um, with Oregon, with Oregon State, Oklahoma State, Texas with a huge Quinn Ewers, Adonai Mitchell, Xavier Worthy, that passing attack. Who comes out on top in that one? Uh, I'll start. Texas, they're going to go and handle business. Um, I don't think Oklahoma State is amazing. I don't think Quinn Ewers is amazing, but I think he's going to go in there, get the job done. They know they have a chance to make the college playoffs, a very good chance if they win this game. I think they're going to go in there, ha go in there, handle business, and make the committee's decision pretty tough. Yeah, Oklahoma State's had a down year. I feel like yeah. even making the championship, they still haven't been great. They lost to UCF like 45-3, to something ridiculous. And I think, I'm not positive, I think they have lost to South Alabama this year too early in the season. And that really looks bad, especially going into a game against Texas, who's, you know, really good. They beat Bama and Bama. Their only loss is a good Oklahoma team. And I think that's going to affect kind of, you know, the mindset for Oklahoma State. I think they're just going to get routed. Yeah, I think Texas will dominate this whole game pretty much. I mean, like you guys said, Oklahoma State's not really having a great year. Even though they're ranked, I mean, they're still, like, a solid team. But, like, when you go up against a team like Texas, especially now that they're fully healthy again and everything, and, I mean, the college football playoff is on the line with this game, I mean, I don't see how they lose this at all. Yeah, Texas has tried, tested, and proven that they can win big games. Oklahoma State's too inconsistent. I mean, as much as I want to, like, root for the underdog of Oklahoma State, I just – I hate to round out the table. But it, it's – Texas is – again, it's another team on a hot streak. I mean, they just beat – who did they play? <coughs> Texas Tech. Texas Tech. 50 to 7? Yeah. Was it? Yeah. And I mean, Arch Manning's got play time. And if Arch Manning's yeah. play time right now, you know you're beating a team a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And so, like, I'm going Texas. Oh, like, I just think they're going to win. They're going to pull it off. Um, there's not – I mean, you guys said everything. There's really nothing more to say to that. I mean, I was going to make some quippy joke like it's the Orange Ripple rivalry instead of the um, – The Red – the red. You know how it's yeah. Red, yeah, red. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that just didn't work. I'm, I'm, I'm done making quips. <laughs> Unless it's good, I'm done making quips. But, yeah. It's probably a good idea. Yeah. It's probably yeah. terrible. Yeah. I will say, I do like – I think Mike Gundy's a great coach. And I, I never want to root out Mike Gundy. You know, he's a man. He's, he's 40. Uh, he's way older than that now. But he was 40 at the time of that. So he uh, he's a great coach, and I do think Oklahoma State is, you know, I think they're an okay team, but they're still not great. And, yeah. and they're Texas, be by BYU by what two scores? Yeah, I mean they yeah. they have been winning recently. Like they're good enough to be ranked, but like yeah. they're not like. But yeah. they're not great. They're yeah, not a great. Beat team. Out Oklahoma though, because I thought I heard something like if Oklahoma made it, it's gonna be like an all SEC Big Twelve. Oklahoma State beat Oklahoma. Yeah. Oh, they did. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember yeah. that. So that uh, that causes Oklahoma a lot of sold. havoc there. Yep. So. So, and I think they both had two conference losses, maybe, and then them beating head to head. Oh, Oklahoma had yeah, like three games Oklahoma two. lost to yeah. Kansas and uh, Oklahoma State. Yep. So. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, do, do do we get the panel curse? Does Oklahoma State pop, pull it out just because these five kind of picked Texas? I don't know, um, but for sure that one's going to be a fun one. But going from the noon game to the four o'clock game, probably the biggest game in terms of the college football playoff. We got the two two. I don't even know what Red Bull, not even Red Bloods, but it's the two biggest teams in the SEC. It's the best team in the country in Georgia and one of the top teams in the country in Alabama who are coming off a huge miracle at Auburn. Um, potentially, if they win, they're in the playoff. If Georgia win, they're going to be in no matter what. So, Georgia, Alabama, Saban versus Kirby Smart. Who's coming out on this one? Yeah, I mean, it's the, the second biggest conference championship this weekend behind the Mountain West Championship. So, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, think we'll see, I think we'll see Georgia pull it out. I've seen Jalen Monroe pull out some magic recently. That Auburn game, you know, fourth and 31, and you sling it to the back, back left corner of your end zone and get it. But I just I don't think he pulls it out against Georgia. Georgia's a much better team than Auburn. And, you, you know, you skidded right past Auburn with, you know, that miracle touchdown. And Auburn hit that loss to, what, New Mexico State? I mean, yeah. uh, Georgia isn't that kind of team. They're a team that has won pretty comfortably, honestly, this season, even though you'll see the score and it looks closer than it really is. They beat Georgia Tech by a lot more than 31-23.
they dominated the entire field, and I think they'll dominate uh, Alabama. I, I agree, and I also think Georgia's experience will, like, by far have have their back in this one because, I mean, Jalen Milrow, it's his first year starting as QB for Alabama, which is also a big weight on your shoulders. And when you're in the championship, I mean, Kirby Smart and a bunch of the defenses had experience in these situations and in national championships. I mean, they won back-to-back. -back. So, I mean, even though you have Carson Beck and, like, guys that aren't as experienced – in some areas, you got you got most of the guys that are experienced, and I, I don't think the Bama team is good enough to beat this Georgia team at all. Everything you two have said makes sense, but you're forgetting one key thing. Bama has Nick Saban. Nick Saban knows how to win big games. You, you've seen him do so it. So does Kirby Smart, though. Kirby Smart does, but it's still Nick Saban. Yeah. Like, Bama's also 16-0 I mean, all... in, uh, in games in Atlanta since... Alabama lost, I think, the got. 2008 yeah. SEC championship. It will be a Georgia home game, but, it, yeah, yeah, but every year. I think Bama will find a way to Lose win them. because they have Nick Saban. I think he's going to somehow get in Jalen Milrow's head and, like, send him off and find a way to beat this Georgia team. They found a way to beat Auburn, and <laughs> that's now Auburn. that's not that impressive, but they, they found a way, to, they they found a way to do a miracle. They did do it. They found a way to win it, and it's Nick Saban. So I think and they started off in a little. I bit think of a when they years, they so. know they can create chaos with this game, and I think that's what they want to do. So I think Nick Saban's going to find a way. I just feel like Bama's just skirted with disaster this whole season. They've had too many close games against mediocre competition, and Georgia's handled pretty much all of their opponents. So I gotta say Georgia's going to win this. Alabama. Like, people are going to say that Alabama just, like, squeezed by by Auburn and they're not going to look good and then they're going to get blown out. I mean, not just – I've seen this on Instagram and TikTok or uh, Twitter and all. So, it's like people are saying, oh, they just, like, squeezed by Auburn and they're going to get demolished. But you got to remember, rivalry games are hyped up. I mean, you could be a number one seed, yeah. you know, like Alabama a few years ago, and Auburn come in and just I mean, Auburn was, just Auburn, Auburn, Auburn was up on Georgia at one point this year, yeah. and yeah. they played each other. But so. have, yeah, yeah, but then Georgia. We saw, but, this, in, we saw this in a lot of rivalry Georgia games. Pulled away. Georgia Oregon pulled State, away or dominate. Oklahoma yeah. State, beat Oklahoma. We saw Wazoo give Washington a really good run for their yeah. money. Even South it's Carolina, just like, huge they -state rivalries didn't let Clemson yeah. run away such with a it. different feel that it doesn't matter what you are or how good you are, it's going to be close. I don't, like, very Bama still do struggled one. with Arkansas. Yeah, USF. Bama struggled with a lot more teams than so. just Auburn. Like, yeah. I just think it'll be close up to a point. Like, I think it'll be close up to, like, half. Just yeah. because they struggled with Auburn? If Georgia had somebody other than Carson Beck at quarterback... I think you say, yeah, absolutely, no question. They but win. Although Carson, Beck Carson, is that Carson Beck's performance, have we, but have I mean, Carson, Carson Beck, Carson Beck in a game this big? Did he get benched? Have, what? No. Carson Beck never got benched. Jalen Milrow did. Yeah, That's exactly. And well, then, that was also against the USF. Conf confidence. See, if what I was going to say was that it was like a rivalry is very tough, but then I was going to be a whole nice little German. It, it didn't work. I'm going Georgia. Like, there's, there's no doubt. I, I'm going Georgia. I'm not sticking with Alabama. I don't care who they have as their coach. It's like Nick Saban's great. They're going to keep it close. I'm you, not gonna say they're gonna you know out. what you grow up as a quarterback in your – like if you're a quarterback in high school, you know what you have in your head? I want to go to Bama because everyone fears Bama and you want to be Bama's quarterback. I feel like as a quarterback in high school, you don't really want to go to Bama. Carson though. Beck has grown up just being like everyone knows Bama is the best team in college football. But also if it's, you're a quarterback in high school and you say you want to go to Bama, you're not going to go to the NFL after that. Is it Kirby? There's been three guys in the past, you know, ten quarterbacks that have done anything but in the NFL and one of them's going to be out of the league. Kirby Smart has just also been like the, Kirby Smart is also the one of uh, Saban's – what does he call it? Like, the know. assistant that can yeah, beat him. The one the assistant, one assistant that can yeah. beat him. This yeah. man literally created propaganda yeah, to too. help his team do better before the season. And in all fairness, Georgia is a team that, just like we said, they don't look like they're blowing out teams. Like, the final scores don't say that. But they slowly kill that team. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. They yeah. absolutely slowly kill that team. It is like torture. All of a sudden, it's, you know, 10 to uh, 10 to 7, I think was Georgia Tech, and then in the blink of an eye, it's 31 yeah. 13. Yeah. Well, Georgia like, and that Georgia Tech very... game doesn't, like, it looks worse for them when you look at the stat sheet, but, like, if you watch the game. Yeah. They're a very, very good team, like, but I, I, I don't. Just, 
I, I don't right. know. It I comes down picked against it, the panel though. That's it, just I, it, com, it comes try. down to who's going to be the better quarterback, Do, and it, I feel like it's a toss. I'm not sure if that's what it comes down to. Who the better? Go. Yeah, but the better quarterback I, is going to win the game. We don't know. Who I think. I'm not sure. I think if George is the better quarterback. Is going to be game. the reason. I would say the better. The better. It's going to come down to quarterback. I think the better trench will win the game. Whoever's better in the trenches wins the game. I think George is bigger. They're better. They're stronger. And they're faster. Actually, pays attention to where he's on the field and doesn't throw it in front of the blue line two times. <laughs> and actually, like, has an awareness because I like Milro, but you can't be. He's in just SEC not experienced enough. An enough. Alabama no. quarterback coached by Nick Saban, and you run across six yards past the line and still throw it thirty yards down. The <laughs> I agree with everything you're <laughs> saying. I just, I, I think Bama's gonna I'm find a way to get it done. <laughs> Nick Saban. It's Nick catches, Saban. I feel it's like twelve games in the season, and he runs past the line. You know when you no watch college that. football highlights, how many times Bama's on there? Let's be honest. With how much he scrambles, he should know the difference between when he's in front of his offensive line and when he sees a DB that's two hundred pounds lighter. I mean, that's like, one you play that's, for it, young it Man, it happens. Like, but I have seen that twice happen against before. Auburn. If he does it against Georgia, he's <laughs> it's a rivalry him. game. He got his jitters out in the biggest game, biggest game of the of the bowl games. But he also got benched oh, after failing in one of his biggest well, games. Not, it is not the biggest the game iron, of the, the season this year. The more, most it even look good against I wouldn't put that as a top ten it's biggest up, game this Art, season. No, so not biggest no, game, not but like biggest rivalry. Like, yeah, like, yeah, I guess Auburn Stadium is intense. No, I yeah, Jordan Harris, beautiful big stadium, packs a lot of fans. A lot of Auburn fans will go to there. I trust him. He got. He got. He I did not play jitter. well. He got jitters out. I just trust Carson I, Beck more. Like, I, I, if you see I mean, Beck, I like Jalen more, but, like, I don't think. I don't think I don't the better quarterback wins the game. I think the better team wins the game. And, and I think Georgia, Georgia has a better team, more talent, yeah. more physical. But, I mean, Alabama, and that's. Alabama's going to find a way. I mean, I wouldn't Alabama be shocked. I, mean, I wouldn't be shocked if Alabama found a way. We don't even know how long. Can so we like, all agree, though, it's scary that Georgia has such a good freshman quarterback? I'm not saying he's great, but, I mean, this kid is already, like, at least. Living up to a bad Stetson Bennett. A bad Stetson Bennett was not bad. If he stays around as long as Stetson Carson Bennett Carson Beck did. is at that level. Oh, boy. As oh okay, 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 okay. Gotcha, 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 I don't gotcha. know. That's like a weird yes. comparison. And right. also, a lot of people were, like, sending him flack before the season and thought he was going to be, like, horrible or just, like, not. He's been good enough for Georgia Tech. How many times on this panel did we say, I don't really trust Carson Beck a lot? Dude, we said it. I okay, I I trust. I, I said did not. That. I, I, I said also. I, may have, I was like, I mean, towards the beginning of the yeah, season, like, he wasn't looking like anything amazing, and I still don't think he's looking like. You also have to look at generational talent or anything, yeah. but he's looking good. The talent like, around him is good great. too. Brock Bowers is probably the best pa- cast catcher. Yeah. Pass, pass, pass catcher, <laughs> right behind uh, Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. in college football, and then Lad McConkey has been very yeah. consistent for Georgia for yeah. multiple years yes. now. He's yes. been on multiple national championship teams. Oh, God. This is a really, really effective Georgia offense that has been effective it's for years. three years it's now. True. There's a reason they won so many they games. Are, is their defense as good as before? I mean, I know they're giving up points, but some of those are trash points. Like Georgia Tech was like late. In the yeah, yeah, no, I would yeah. say I, this is the worst Georgia defense in the past three years, and it's still probably the best defense in all of college football. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm like, that's ridiculous. Going up against that, I mean, there's a difference between Auburn's defense and Georgia's defense. Yeah, especially Griffin, in your thoughts. <laughs> My thoughts. Um, it's it's going to be a close game. I you I think it, the line's Georgia minus six. I think game's close. Uh, but the better quarterback pulls it out. I think Carson Beck's better quarterback than Jalen Milrow, especially in the clutch. He's proved that wrong. Um, I agree with that. I'd, I'd probably, I'd probably run with Georgia, but I honestly could see either team winning. Both teams deserve to be in the playoff, in my opinion, uh, right now. But I, I mean, of course, we'll see what happens there. Uh, it's probably, it, it's probably going to be my probably favorite game to watch, just in terms of how close it's going to be, how important coaching is going to be into it, and who, it's basically going to come down to which defense is on top, which quarterback I trust more, and for both of those categories, I trust Georgia. But nevertheless. Um, We'll we'll get we'll go we'll talk about that more um, later on in the show, uh, but we're going to move on to an even more exciting game, um, and that's when Michigan takes on Iowa, one of the best offensive juggernauts in college football. Um, but yeah, I think this this answer should be pretty obvious: um, Michigan or Iowa in the Big Ten championship. Who takes it? Iowa. Yes. Can we? <laughs> You're right. It is pretty obvious. I mean, I feel like I feel like we got. I think we can answer this in like one word. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you spell it out. Michigan. Oh. 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 Oh, wait, we were spelling it out. M I C. Okay. I, oh, I, I actually I actually think it'll be a better game than a lot of people do. There's not going to be a lot of scoring. It's going to be That's a really boring game. I 
I do like Kirk Ferentz's Iowa team, though. I, I like watching – I don't like watching them play, but I like <laughs> them as a team. I think they have a fantastic defense. I mean, it is un, unreal how good their defense is no, yeah. and how bad their offense is in one <laughs> season. But Michigan's defense is just so – also just at that upper tier of college football, and their offense is right up there with them. And, you know, they just beat Ohio State without their head coach. And, you know, you're getting them back now. And getting your head coach back is huge. And uh, I do think Michigan will run away with it. Uh, I think it will be later, though, than a lot of people. I don't know if it will be a blowout immediately. But after probably the second quarter, it will yeah. be a blowout. I, I do wish Iowa hadn't lost that game on the fair catch call because then this game would have oh, meant something. Yeah. Because yeah. if Iowa had won this game and they had that won was, that previous game, they'd have a case for the college that was football a playoffs. horrible call. So I, I think it means but a lot less. And I think Iowa – Dude, you would want to watch that offense in the playoffs. Nobody. Be like, case, it would have been, it yeah, been yeah, like Georgia to the CU all over. Yeah, it would be 63. Except like zero three. points on the board. So yeah. it, it, it's, it's Michigan, but yeah. it, I wish yeah. there was a little bit more of a, of a um, decision that could happen. With yeah, I think we can all agree here that it's Michigan, right? No. Yeah, you're right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not going. Like, it, I mean, some of us deep down, we want Iowa to win because it's Iowa. Why would you not want to see the worst offense in college football beat? Hey, 123rd the in the best. FBS. Okay, let's. What, I have 125 out, out of 120. What 123rd out of 125. Let's. Hey, that is not the bottom or the second bottom. It, it isn't. It's third bottom. Wait, who's yeah. It's like the Bears. It's right there. Right? Would the Bears be that, that 30th team? Anyway, go ahead. The <laughs> Giants would. No. Let's not go there. <laughs> I don't I don't say, there's much going on in Iowa. Yeah, I don't know much to say. I mean, it's Michigan and it's Iowa. I mean, Iowa's defense is amazing, don't get me wrong, but, like, they'll hold on to, like, what the you said, quarter. right about around the second quarter, and then it'll be gone. The plate car will break one big run off. Yeah, and exactly, and then there. the momentum will yeah. just switch to McCarthy the side will start the entire time. Yep. It'd be cool yeah. to see yeah. some chaos, but... It would, it, yeah, I, want, I want something to happen this yeah. weekend. Something different, something new. Yeah. I mean, Oklahoma see. State pulls it out, that'd be fun. Oklahoma yeah. State wins, yeah. Bama wins, Iowa wins. There's Any of them. Yeah. Yeah. Louisville yeah. wins. Any upset will make it fun. And then Wyoming wins to Mountain West. If it's under six points, I'm going Iowa. But with the less, like the that is not even. If it's under six, if it's I don't under know, six I don't know if the game so will be under six points total. That would be ridiculous. So you think if it's Michigan under six won't total. score at all? Michigan will score. No, I'm going Michigan. I, I don't see Iowa winning. I think this, like you guys, said, I think it's gonna be close. I have a great comparison though. This is like the Dallas Cowboys versus the San Francisco 49ers defense with the Carolina Panthers offense. That's how I equate it. I don't know if it's a great comparison. It's a decent comparison. Uh, it's a I, decent was just, comparison. I really was just, just thinking. I'd say it's like the Eagles more than yeah. the Cowboys. Yeah, oh, Eagles? Okay. If, yeah, you, if you look at. I was thinking yeah, more. If you look at Michigan overall. Yeah, how good Michigan is. Michigan's overall <laughs> roster. I was thinking more because they choke in the playoffs. Like, <laughs> Michigan, you know, they're the Amer America's team. Well, Michigan doesn't are. normally make the. They are not America's team. Yeah. But they yeah. normally <laughs> don't make the playoffs. They're like, they're the oldest team. No it, one likes them, but they know. always make the playoffs I, and they always disappoint. Ask, I, I ask mean, the man. I, I, I like, like them more Michigan. than the Ohio State. Yeah. Ask I like man, Michigan. Ask that's the man who all coaches I'm the best block M team in all of football. But, Eli Drinkowitz. But Ohio State American doesn't make the playoffs. I'm saying Michigan makes the playoffs almost every year, just like the Cowboys. Ohio State they don't. made it like Ohio State's made Michigan. it more than Michigan. Wait, Michigan's made it twice. Ohio State's made it four times. They made it last year. I probably five or six. They made it the first time. They made it multiple times. It's just Michigan has been Ohio State has more recently. Yeah, recently. He's talking about recently. The same amount as they're more. Ohio State. Ohio State. Ohio State. The last three years, last I think year. they've made it the same Ohio State made it last year. Yeah, they did. And almost yeah. beat Georgia. Oh, they did, they did. Okay. And missed that uh, field goal. Either way. Mm. I'm, still, Yo, watching that at <laughs> I'm still going. I just think, like, Michigan's always hated on by, like, the, I mean, I don't know. It was. I thought it was a great Hey, I'm, I like it's Michigan, okay. so whatever you were going to say, I would have agreed with. So. Hey, it's just, like, they're a great team, which is why I don't see them winning the, the yeah. CFP. Even though I like, think – Even if they make it – I, I think J.J. It. McCarthy is very overrated, and I don't think they'll end every, up winning I don't see the CFP, any team but I think they play will play dominate against Iowa. Well. But it's, like, every year they keep saying, oh, Michigan's going to win it, Michigan's going to win it, and then they fail. They fail Yeah, it's like Penn State, except they make it to the playoffs. Yes. I wouldn't be shocked if this is Harbaugh's I think going to pull a Peyton Manning and win his last season – but I think Harbaugh. I think they. I wouldn't be shocked if Harbaugh cruised on into the NFL. Yeah, I still think they have a good chance this year, just because I feel like the competition is weaker than past years. Because I mean, you got. Yeah. Yep. Georgia is the worst they've been in three years. And Alabama still the best is. Game football, probably, yeah, exactly. Which is ridiculous. And they're still I mean. the best. And then you got Alabama, who's still not even in the playoffs right now, and all these other teams. So, I still think they'll have a good chance, but you never know. I do, if you guys were Jim Harbaugh, would you? 
decide to give up the Michigan job for Carolina Panthers job? No. That's like the only one right now. That's, I, 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 I can, I'd give it up no. for the Bears. No. Uh, I would, if I'm Harbaugh, I'd give it up for the Bears because I played for the Bears. I would. The Jim Harbaugh was the Bears. Yeah, I would not do it for the Panthers. Cause, I might do it for uh, the Raiders. What's his name? The owner? Tepper, uh, Tepper. Yeah, he's horrible. He's yeah. disgusting. I don't, I don't know if I'm the any worst, coach if I'm giving up my current job to go be the Carolina Panthers coach. If you're a high school coach. I don't know if I'm leaving a I'd rather be unemployed. What if you're a bottom ranked high school? Uh, I'd rather be like homeless. a B team coach. Yeah, and you're I might stay for a B. I mean, only if you must go into another B team. Only if you get paid millions. You're getting fired within. <laughs> I mean, it's <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's two different anyway. You're going from one B team to another. Get a B Deshaun team. Watson contract yeah. and then go off in the coaching. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather. I'd probably rather be homeless, living on the streets of Skid Row in Los Angeles. On that note, Griffin. I mean. I don't even know what to say after what Angelo just said, but um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with you guys. I think Michigan will take it. I don't think it will be that fun to watch, so I think viewers might change it to the other 8 o'clock game, uh, the ACC championship. This game has a little bit more of lower stakes um, after the loss of Jordan Travis for Florida State and Louisville, who lost to Kentucky last week. They're out of the playoff. Florida State, if they lose, they're out of the playoff. If they win, they're in, so huge for them. Does Florida State take it? Are they in the playoff, finish their undefeated season? Or do Louisville spoil the party? Who takes it? I, mean, I can start it off. Take oh, it away? That's fine. I'm going Louisville. Interesting. Honestly, like, I just – what I'm talking about. As much as Florida State seems like they're going to win it, I mean, they're undefeated, they're doing well, I don't tr- – I don't know. I just – it feels like if there was an upset in these five games – Oregon's not going to be upset because I think Oregon's favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, even if Wash upset, it's not a big upset. Both of them are too good to be, like, upsets. Yes. You know? So, if you're looking at it, the two closest to being an actual true upset would either be Alabama over Georgia or Louisville over Florida State. Because – What about Iowa over Michigan? Here we go. No, I mean, like, closest <laughs> – Realistic. I'm talking about, like, the most realistic. <laughs> I mean, you know, like, like that would be the biggest upset if it happened, but let's be honest. It's like a zero-point, like – like, that's the, least, that's the least. That's the least. Like, Angela's more likely to go if to the Iowa Skid holds them to zero. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Angela's more likely to get the Carolina Panthers job than, like, Iowa is to win. Yeah. Um, okay. But, like, I, I just think that the most realistic upset would be Louisville over Florida yeah. State. And I can actually see it. Yeah, I agree. I think Louisville's. I would have to see, like, five starters go out for Michigan, at least, for, Lou- to, for Iowa to even come close yeah. to getting to, like, an upset. I- I think Louisville will win. I mean, they have their backup. And even though he hasn't, like, played horrible when he did play, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, Louisville, they barely lost to Kentucky. FSU has played really close games. I mean, even teams like us where we should have won. Yeah. But, you know, it things happen. underwhelming, to be honest. Yeah. Like, and I thought that's – coming into the season, I thought their defense was going to be amazing, especially when they carry played them. LSU for the first game of the season. But, as I mean, I feel like they've just – I mean, they literally have gotten worse. As this they let Clemson put up 24 on them. That's yeah. Yeah. unheard of. And, and, that, and, that, was, <laughs> and that was, uh, like, the bad, the bad Clemson. Yeah. You know, Clemson that was the time where we were, work, like, yeah. bad. And they didn't even score that much in the first – they what did was it. The score in the first half, it was like 14. So we were up 14 like 10. Yeah, it was, like it was yeah. something. Like something they turned something it on like later, like they're a second half team. It was like 21 14 or really something. Turn it on. Yeah, yeah, but Louisville is like also kind of ticked off because they just lost at home to exactly. To and now, yeah, but and now they're also out of like yeah. their chances at anything. So I think they just want to be like, oh, well, then we might as well get FSU you too. out of here too. So kind of like Clemson ruining South I, Carolina's. I had Louisville as my pick. But Tate Rodmaker, Rodemaker, Rodemaker, Rod, Rod, I don't know. Rodemaker. Rod, nobody knows. I like, I like Rodemaker. Rod Rodemaker. More. That sounds about right. Yeah. Um, he beat Louisville last year. He came in in the second half when FSU was down yeah. and beat Louisville. Yeah. So he knows how to do it. He knows how to beat them. I think he threw. He was like a, he had ten completions or something with two touchdowns. Two touchdowns. Um, yeah. It's a very right. different Louisville team. I'm about very, to say, it, very, it, it is. Very but it still, is. but still, he found a way to beat Louisville. He obviously can win a game. Like he's not, he's not a. It's not like quarterback, but yeah. he's not like who is this guy? Exactly. So, I, I want to lean Louisville just because of that idea of yeah, we might as well ruin your season and cause chaos. But at the same time, I think FSU is going to find a way to win and is going to get blown out in the playoffs, but I think they're going to take a spot from a team that would make a much more interesting playoff just because they'd be like, ha-ha, we went undefeated. Sure. Screw you guys. Louisville's had, outside of Notre Dame, a pretty weak schedule. Yeah. And they're 
in the ACC championship. Oh, yeah. So I got to go with Florida State. They're going to win this. They're going to win by like seven. I give them seven points on that. Um, go to playoffs and get smacked by Georgia. Yeah, like because if I they don't to, have their best player. If I had to but, bet on it, I'm picking FSU. But yeah. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. But let's make I'm just fun. picking Louisville because why would I pick FSU, you know? Well, Louisville just lost to a really bad Kentucky team. Like, this yeah. is a horrible Kentucky team. Devin Leary is not who he was at NC State. Okay, and Ray Davis is – Sure. He is but this Kentucky team is terrible. Yeah. That's all and I'm Kentucky just lost to South Carolina. Yeah, so, they did. Yeah. That was disgusting. Yeah. And I get it's a rivalry. I get all of that. You can't lose to Kentucky. Nope. And you can't lose to Pittsburgh. And Especially Louisville lost to Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Pittsburgh? Especially when the playoffs are on yeah. the Pittsburgh line against was, Yeah, Pittsburgh, that's a bad. Yeah. That's a bad Those are two that's terrible bad losses bad for Louisville. Loss. Yeah. And, you know, Brian mentioned this would probably be the biggest upset. I think it's the second biggest upset, barring, you know, UNLV defeating Boise State in the Mountain West Championship. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I do think – For the record, he pulled that up on his – Yeah, that's what I was looking up. I couldn't remember who was playing. I thought it was Wyoming, honestly. So, um, I mean, yeah, the, uh, Louisville's not winning against Florida State. Florida State's a much more talented roster. They have a better coach. They have everything – in Florida State is better than Louisville They right haven't now. been embarrassed twice. Yeah, by, by two teams bad losing teams. losing records. Yep. Yeah. One of them at – are they both at home? I think one was at home. Kentucky was like 6-5, 5-6. They're terrible. They were very close to 500. They're horrible. 500. Yeah. That's all I know. They are not a good football That's, team. Yeah. Uh, didn't Nick Saban, though, say last week, he was like, sometimes when things go your way, it does, it's not really a good sign. I mean, FSU lost their quarterback. They've been undefeated. Is it really a good sign? Is it not? And that's from Nick Saban, Toby. What did he Which, say? That's what he said. He said. No. Well, that obviously did didn't say? go Sometimes, their way. Though. Yeah, they lost their starting quarterback. That did not go their no, way. No, no, no. I'm pretty sure that's not going. They lost. <laughs> hold on. They lost their starting quarterback and then continued <laughs> yeah. to stay undefeated after people thought. They yeah. Were. Because did, their team is they really beat? good. Their okay. defense is really good. I get what you're saying. Thank you. I Thank get you. what you're they, saying. They beat a bad Florida team. They beat North yeah. Alabama. Us five could go out and beat North Alabama <laughs> right now. Put Griffin at quarterback. We're winning that game. Oh, well, that's how you know it's over. Yeah. No, I'm just saying. I'm just throwing. saying what Nick Saban said. The one that Toby said could, you know. The Nick only. The go. only. I just don't think Toby things have gone. gone the, I don't the think only reason. The only reason. Yeah, I also want to yeah. say things have gone for us. I don't think they've outperformed the team. Every a missed field goal every, by Clemson. That's okay. Lost. That that went their way. I don't know if that's luck. But then they. But then they beat us. They lose their quarterback in a game which they were losing, and then all of a sudden came back in with a backup and won. But that's not going their way. That's North Alabama. Yeah. After losing a while to Florida, went back their way. Florida's also in a bad Florida. team. In Florida's Gator, terrible. But their home field advantage is very good. Yeah, but they're sure, terrible. Sure, but they suck. It's, a, it's, again, that emotion for rivalry. I'm just saying, but with good You could have put Will Smith the world balances, back and they would have won that game. Doesn't Florida The world there? balances out, and I'm just saying, I wouldn't be shocked if Louisville wins. Nobody would be shocked. I think Florida we, being terrible hurts their case, though, right? Wouldn't that mean that would hurt their case? Yeah, because they only saying how they're by. terrible. No, I agree, but it's. Yeah, but it doesn't mean things aren't it's, going. Things away. aren't going Florida State's way right now. Yeah, things are not. very opposite for Florida State. Everything is falling apart for them at the end of the Everyone season. Everyone is down and on them. They're Even facing if they're adversity. Undefeated, they might not make it into the playoffs based yeah. on the committee. Like things are not. They're going facing away. a lot of adversity they right need, now, and I think they overcome adversity, make the playoffs, and lose by forty to whoever. They need I'm to win sure. big. I'm yeah, sure the committee doesn't want play. another TCU disaster. Yes. So no, but you, to, can, you can't they need not to, allow an undefeated team. I mean, a team's going to be left out they need to no win matter big. what. Yeah, but they so. need to win big to secure their spot in the it's, playoffs. Because if they have a close, bat, ugly-looking game against mm -hmm. Louisville. I think if all of the undefeated Power 5 teams right now win, there's no way you leave any of them out. Well, hey, isn't that our next conversation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Possibly. Yeah, I was, about to, I was about to bring that up. Because let's pretend that you guys are the committee, right? If only four teams can make it. I mean, you guys already gave your picks. I'll start with Angelo. Angelo, four teams, college football playoff next when Sunday comes around. Who are going to be those four teams, at least in your opinion, after all those games happen on Saturday? Top four, one to four. Who do you got? One, Georgia. Two, Michigan. Three, Oregon, because they're going to beat Washington. And then four, Texas, because Florida's going to lose. Florida State's going to lose. And then Texas is going to get in, and then Quinn Ayers is going to be in the playoffs. And it's going to be a beautiful sight. Luke? Uh, one, Georgia. Two, Michigan. Three, Washington. Four, Florida State. Toby? Give me Michigan. Then give me Texas. Then give me Bama. And then give me Georgia. Chaos scenario. <laughs> 
Not Iowa winning some chaos. <laughs> scenario. Wait, where's Washington? <laughs> Not They're in it. They lose to Oregon in an ugly looking game. But didn't you pick Washington to win? Don't worry. I'm just saying. <laughs> this is what the it's CFP has come to. The <laughs> this is the CFP that we're trusting. Uh, yeah, like, to, I, to be honest, I think Or's, Oregon's yeah. going to win, but I can't pick against so, Toby, Oregon. I think if the college football player were listening to this, they would never hire you. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. You just I, I, I have the Washington I have, may win, but Oregon will go I'm not win saying this is the most likely oh, scenario, God. but I have, I have the way want. this all happens. I can, I can break it down for you He's guys. He's reading the future every, while also predicting. After everybody. Daniel? I one Georgia, two Michigan. Cause they're both gonna win. Yeah. Winner of the Pac-12, and you gotta reward Florida State. Yeah, for going undefeated. Even if I don't know if it's ugly. If it's ugly, I would rather have Texas. But you gotta reward teams mm -hmm. going for undefeated. Because that's really hard to do. There's no point in playing the season yeah, if you can't get into the playoffs in a Power Five conference after you go undefeated. Yep. Yeah. So. Yeah. So you and Luke are both saying all undefeated, right? Uh, he said winner of Pac-12. You had Oregon. Pac you said Oregon. Oregon would be yeah, because yeah, they both have Florida State winning too. So. All right. Ryan. I'm like looking at this, and I'm not gonna lie. Like I literally it, had the exact same as Angelo. Um, but who's the eight seed? I'm trying to think of the top ten. They're not eight gonna get it. Bama. 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 Yeah. Or, is it Bama? Yeah, it yeah, is. It's it's nine. Nine. So, nine's, the only nine's one is Missouri. Like Missouri or something. Nine's yeah, Missouri. nine's Missouri. Yeah. A two lost Missouri. Yeah. It, it so goes six, six, seven. Yeah. So, I guess, yeah, it goes I'm going to say six five is Ohio is, State. They're obviously not. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Ohio State. Five is Oregon. Oh, they could. But I say I Iowa, Missouri. Oregon. Right? Iowa, Missouri, Oklahoma State, and Louisville. I'm joking. I'm not going to say that. That's just <laughs> stupid because no one's going to make it from there. I, I probably have to agree with Angelo. Like, I think George is going to win. George is going to West champion Boise State. <laughs> I do, I do think. No, it's going to be uh, UNLV. I do think Michigan <laughs> could be. Jane I do Newell? think Jane Michigan Newell. could be one though, because I think if Georgia plays too close of a game with Alabama and Michigan destroys, uh, it's still, uh, if, if Iowa, Georgia beats, I still think they, they love love I think they could be. Would you like me to, would you, would you like me to break down my my four like and and how that happened? Let me see my four. Go ahead. Sorry, I forgot you. I try to make too many. They're beating Iowa. Um, I'm probably gonna yeah, go. I'm gonna match up with Angela. I'm gonna go Georgia, Michigan, Oregon, um, Texas. I just think that's gonna how it's gonna break. Uh, no matter how close Alabama gets, if they lose, happen. they're not going in. Um, and to be honest, I think even if Alabama wins, I still don't see them going in the playoffs mm -hmm. um, unless they absolutely dominate Georgia and like blow them up by like at least two or three scores. Okay, so this is what I have happening. Take it away. This is what I have happening. So Oregon wins a close but ugly game against Washington, not really um, convincing for the committee. Texas beats Oklahoma State very strongly. They look very good going into it. Bama beats Georgia in a high-scoring shootout that's decided on a last-second play. Louisville beats FSU. Michigan dominates Iowa. They're number one in that scenario because they dominate and they're undefeated. Yep. Then... So, so what happens then? Hold on. Sorry, I'm He's looking. The whole, if Bama, so, the whole so Texas, yeah. so, but so, yeah, you, you if Bama beat Georgia, Texas is so, so, so Texas names. beat Bama. Yes. You have to reward. You have to they reward have to be above regular Bama. season. So they have to be above Bama. Yes. They also, so then they're number two. That's yes. fair. Then you that's have fair. the SEC championship. At, at, you have the SEC champion in Bama with one loss to Texas, yes. who's the number two team in this scenario. Yes. So they have to go number three, and then you have Georgia over Oregon because Oregon beat a down Washington team who has not been playing as good, and they lost to Washington earlier in the season. Georgia lost in the SEC championship in a shootout to the number three team. My only you argument there, Oregon even over though my only argument Oregon there is Oregon those? avenges their one loss, and they're a Pac-12 champion. Georgia loses, and they're not a champion of anything. That's so that's so the decision. It's, it's that very hard you have to make. How would you put Texas that. above Oregon if it's already Oregon above Texas? Like if Oregon wins and they're a champion. Oregon's not even in it. He's if they're, Oregon, they're, Oregon or saying, five. Oregon would be five. Oregon or five right now. Yeah, Oregon would stay at five. But and you're saying yeah, you would stay at Oregon five. Oregon 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 would how does Texas jump Oregon then? Yeah. yeah. And what was because, because they're the Big 12 champion. But Oregon beats number three. Yeah. And, and they, their one loss their one loss is better than Oregon's loss. No, it's not. No, no. 
Mm. Oregon lost to Bama, Washington. Bama to the number Oregon three. Lost Texas to lost to four. Oklahoma. Okay, Oregon. Oh crap! Yeah, but yeah. Texas Oregon, lost to, like, Oregon would have to get in in this. No, like, no, all, I, I like to but say it, it makes so, sense. But so with Texas, but with Texas beating Bama and still being big, I think in that situation, not like I think in the situation, Texas have to be ahead of Bama. No, I I agree. Texas would be three. They're ahead of Bama. Georgia drops out. I would take or, Oregon, and, that, yeah. and then yeah. I put and then I put Bama okay. four. So that's yeah. a, that's a very. Yeah. That, that, but I understand what you're saying. That, I was a little confused because yeah. I was like, how but do they the jump commit, in? Like all yeah. that they're both. Yeah, yeah. I, the think, I think they could jump because the committee is weird. Like it this could happen. Not, yeah, and I, I agree. Any, if anything if, can happen. If Oregon has a really ugly win against Washington, they could drop out. Yeah, but you're still a Pac-12 champion, and you beat the three. It's very difficult, especially with the Pac-12. And you have how deep Pac-12 was. You have the Bo Nix story, which is huge money seller, especially in Oregon, as a huge. That's How true. many people on the East Coast care about? A lot. Of, no, because he's all been, the people from Auburn. He was an all the SEC fans That's love true. Bo Nix. Bo Nix is such a big story, have. especially as he's been. Especially in, you know he's five, been. Bo Nix has yeah, been. He's you know old. he's he been the, feeling the offense. He's a dark horse for Heisman. I wouldn't be. He's he's he been has, having fun. He's all fun under that new he's offense. Like, he's like second. I wouldn't be shocked if he's a dark horse. I'd still rather I'd still rather have Georgia over. I'd rather see Georgia at the four instead of Oregon. They're gonna get. I don't know if it could happen. Yes, just based on how everything works. out. They would get a lot of hate for putting so much SEC in when you have Oregon, Bo Nix, dark dark horse Heisman. He's second. He's feeling in the new offense. But it's it's just having fun. He's also like the second. It's hard to take the number one seed the entire year, and their one loss is to Bama. In the who, championship. In the championship, it's hard to take them out of the playoffs. Yeah, but also it's hard to keep Oregon. I, like it's it's that very, it's, 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 it's absolutely a complete chaos. Yeah, it's, it's hard to hard take to Oregon out. Let me, let me, let me, let me tell you mine. It's a, and it's a hot take. It stays exactly the same next week. That's what it That's, is right now. That could happen. That's what I said, right? I think I think, I think it stays the exactly the same. I, I think we have the same one. Yeah, I don't I don't think anything changes. Sorry, last thing. Ohio State, do you think they have a chance? No. 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 A lot of Could things. Any, no. Any, a lot of things would no. have to happen. Because even that, there's a lot of things that could happen. Yeah, even if Michigan thing loses that to Iowa, happen, there's still Ohio State. Georgia, Georgia would have to win. Michigan would win. Dude, Louisville, Louisville would have to win. Who would you put in for? Uh, so it would be it would be or, or Michigan. It, it would be yeah. it would be Georgia, Michigan, and then let's say Washington wins. So that's Washington. And then bit then Texas. If Texas loses, loses, then maybe the committee, then Ohio, maybe Ohio State slips in. But Ohio State would be. I will say this: I think the committee puts Ohio State over Georgia because of resume. Right. I think they'd put Ohio State over Georgia. You think if Bama neither beats resume Georgia, is great. If, if neither if team Georgia has a loses, resume. the other thing is I would. I would. Ohio State. Ohio State's does, only Ohio loss State is a one-score game in Michigan. Yeah, yes. Ohio State has a stronger yeah, strength of schedule than Georgia. But, but Georgia is neither much. neither strength schedule. The one thing we gotta admit is that the CFP always loves a storyline. So you have the Bonick yeah. storyline. That's one. He's what leads. He's second in FBS in the last two seasons with like 80 plus touchdowns. And he also oh. like sucked at so one point. So at too. some point, Oregon's gonna have to go in if they win. Well, yeah, he, he did build up and all that, and like he's like a whatever it is. Dark horse having fun under the <laughs> The offense. other thing <laughs> is Georgia. Even if Georgia loses, you can, I don't think they can jump another team because Georgia has the story of a three P, which has never been done before. Yeah, talk but about being scripted. Like I'm not gonna say. But like, if, but if, they lose, if we're talking Bama about can't be below Georgia, saying, Bama, listen, can't, Bama has to go ahead of Georgia, out. and Texas has to go ahead of. If we're talking about Georgia. stories, though, you can make a story for like any of these teams. Been. You can but make a story about Washington and Michael. Yeah, Michigan's, Michigan's making it without every, 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 every team has make a story about FSU losing. I'm just saying they favor the East Coast. But you can make a story about Iowa not having an offense. You can make a story about any team. Georgia's East Coast. They fall in that region. They're also the most recent and the biggest story. Yeah, but if they because lose, if they lose to Bama, I would argue that the biggest Bama, story it, right it, now, it, if they the biggest story right now is Boise State's rise to the Mountain West Championship. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing I have to add to that is that Georgia, this is like last thing I had, Georgia, um, I'm only saying this if that Ohio State can't jump Georgia because of the storyline. That's the only thing, that's the only argument. They can fall out. But you're not going to put Ohio State above Georgia. If I agree. You I can't put Ohio, I would put Ohio, Ohio State yeah, above Georgia Ohio State, if Bama Ohio State, beats. Be- Ohio State has the better loss. Sure, but I, I you can't they have the better State loss. But Georgia, but it's, has, Georgia has a Georgia loses in the SEC championship. Ohio State didn't make the championship. I think that really if Bama yeah. blows out Georgia, but, that's but, a loss. But, but Ohio State, like, like, Ohio if Bama State blows out Georgia, SEC, then yes, I because think Ohio State's above Bama. That's a, just, a loss against a team that's already in the playoff. I think Ohio State also has. Yeah, if you put Ohio State in the SEC, I'm just saying they might lose more than just one game. I will say I will say this though, and and like just to like change gears real quick. This is probably the toughest college football playoff selection that you have that they have probably made and it's kind of nice that you're moving to a 12 team playoff. Yeah, this would have yes. been a great year for it 12 would teams. All, it, it, it would be it would be perfect, but I mean Yeah, imagine Ole Miss and Missouri slipping in there. 
At the yeah, at the end of the day, I mean, imagine I uh, like nine and three Boise State making it. Uh, imagine Missouri. <laughs> no, imagine Missouri hosting a. Has got I actually would want to see Ole Miss. Yeah, like Liberty, 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 uh, Liberty, Liberty would probably make it. Yeah, Air Liberty Force would. at one point. Oh, yeah, well, top 20. well, Air Force didn't make it because the computer generation put UNLV and Boise State in over Air Force. Air Force was screwed out of the Mountain West Championship. No I matter mean, what happens, the Mountain West is the best robbed. conference in college football. I mean, I mean, at the end, at the end of the day, you're just get, you have to let the football do the talking. Whether you're UNLV, whether you're Boise State, whether you're Alabama and Georgia, whether you're Michigan. It's, I mean, you just gotta let the ball do it. Iowa's five. We'll find, and we're gonna, and we're gonna find that out. Friday, Friday, Saturday. I mean, our answers will be figured out sooner than later. Just think about the craziness when we'll Iowa defeats Michigan, State, Michigan 30 to 6. But I, I will, I will move, I will move on from this real, really fast because we have, we do have one more thing to talk about. One more. And um, that is the Heisman. And I, 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 I'm, I might just unleash the beast, and you guys will probably just go at each other. But there, there are plenty of front runners. There's LSU's Jaden Daniels. There's Oregon's Bo Nix. There's Washington's Michael Panix. You got Carson Beck, Jalen Milrow. You could talk about them being in the Heisman. Yeah, Heisman. Cool. JJ McCarthy. But I'll start with Brian. I'll go in the other side. Okay. Who is your Heisman winner? Give me one sentence. Why? Um, one Jaden sentence Daniels. Why. Stats. Okay. It's like an intro. Like, that's all I got. I mean, you look at it. He's leading in almost everything. He's 50. 50 touchdowns, 5,000 all-purpose yards, 72% completion. Jaden Daniels. Okay. He's also first in QBR, so that's what I'm going with. Daniel? Jaden Daniels, yes. 50 points per game around there. Yeah. Toby? One sentence makes it hard to prove my point, but Michael Penix. <laughs> Homer. You're biased. <laughs> <laughs> Slightly. Luke? Boise State quarterback, Taylor Green. No. Okay, actually, uh, Jaden Daniels, he's the best player in college football. Jaden Daniels, 5,000 yards from scrimmage, and um, 50 touchdowns. New York Giants future legend. He also only has like, I mean, it's like 40 touchdowns of four interceptions. He has 50 Can I ask? 50, I, yeah. 50, 50 all purpose. Yeah. Just, because, just because Toby is the only odd one out, I'll let him speak his point. Can Why I Michael Bennett? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, first That's of all, let me, just ask, let me just ask you guys a question. Yes, sir. Sure. Is Jaden Daniels as good as RG3? Lamar Jackson and Tim Tebow. I would argue Michael yes. Uh, yeah, I would argue he is. I would say as a college football year. player, in, in one, one season, season compared yeah. to their seasons. Oh yeah. Yes, he's oh, good. Yeah. RG three and so Jaden Daniels so compare very well. Dude, he's okay. up there. So he's up there with one of Obviously, the best just, college football so players so I've ever so seen. With so my I'm own just asking, eyes. I'm just asking that because those are the la those are the three quarterbacks in the 2000s to have won the Heisman with three regular season losses. Okay. Now the point I make for Penix. Is, sure, do you see him up there with them? I'm just curious this year. Like, I because you asked I, the question, I'm just curious. Do, I do. I think he needs to blow out Oregon. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. that's okay. the way. If he yeah, okay. blows out Oregon, oh, yeah. he and led his team to an undefeated yeah. season. Yep. I think he makes a very good case no, yeah. because the committee also you. takes into account winning. That. He's undefeated. They'll be a two seed if they two or three seed if they blow out mm -hmm. um, Oregon. That and I see. I, I want it to happen. So that's why I have him. But if Bo Nix wins this game, Bo Nix is the Heisman over Jaden Daniels yeah. because they're a lot closer in stats. And yeah, I mean, because I think it's kind of like a—I mean, I wouldn't say a toss-up, but like it's, it's a toss-up. It's, like it's, toss it's like one A, like one A, one B with into Bo the Nix yeah. and Jaden. I mean, yeah, one A, one B, Bo and Jaden, and then right outside you have Maserati Marv and you have uh, Michael Penix. <laughs> I'm very curious though. Like, so you talked about how three losses. If you're looking at undefeated quarterbacks, do you think Michael Penix this year, undefeated wise? Is in the same tier as Joe Burrow or like a Mac Jones when they played. And well, well this Mac isn't the same year though. No, I'm just curious. And, he's a very and you just said Joe too. Burrow, and then you I don't said think Mac he's Jones. a Joe well, no, Burrow. I think he's yeah. better than Mac Jones. Yeah, because Mac Jones did have a good like squad. He had, yeah. a, he had a fine season that year. I still don't think he should have won the Heisman that year, but he had a fine season. And I don't think he's on. Joe and Joe Burrow. Burrow. Mac Jones was Devontae Smith. Am I? I'm thinking wrong thing. Yeah, yeah. Because Mac Jones never won. But still, I think I think as I think if you're the committee of the Heisman, and you look at Mike, and and you have. Michael Penix yeah, okay. blow out Oregon, like destroy Tom. their storyline. And he has a great game. He has the interceptions hurt him. Eight interceptions will hurt him. But he has the stats to be a Heisman. Yeah. And I think then you have to take the undefeated conference champion over a nine and three quarterback. And especially and especially yeah. when yeah, he I mean, beat yeah. when he I mean if he you beat the Heis, other Heisman candidate two yeah. times nice. in one year. 
It's a, it kind of tells the story it's tough. for you. I also have to look at LSU's loss. They have an early loss to an undefeated Florida State team that looks very good right now. And you have a loss to Alabama after they uh, target him and injure him yeah. uh, in yeah. the game yeah. on a missed target yeah. call. And then you have a loss to a really good Ole Miss team. Because it, exactly. These are three the good losses. It's not, like, it's not losses. like these yeah. were blowouts. Was, yeah, you're not losing. Yeah. It's not uh, like these were blowouts. The because of Jaden Daniels, they weren't blowouts. Yeah. They were or else they would and have, you have been. And you have a win over number nine, Missouri. So I absolutely, I think it, stats-wise, if you just put stats on paper, he's the Heisman, no question. I agree yeah, with you, no, I agree with I agree with you guys on that. But you also have to look at winning. You have to look at everything. Do you think that if Bo Nix beats Washington and makes the playoffs, He's over Jaden Daniels. I think as long if he if he performs, if he, has, he if he has if he has two hundred fifty yards and he has two touchdowns, yes. Okay. I yeah. think that pushes exactly. him over in, yep. in a conference because final game. But he has to have a good performance stats versus Penix and them. Yeah. But yeah. Penix, if he goes, it's like Bo Nix has like has one less touchdown. Well, think, here's what I'm, here's what I'm saying to the to the to the, to the conference champion set, right? Caleb Williams won the Heisman even after he lost to Utah in the Pac-12 championship. Yeah. And he out, he was the number four seed. They were the number four seed. They lost. They were kicked out. So, I mean, yeah, it doesn't seem win. like they care about winning. It just but cares about the stats. I also yeah, feel they like love that was stats. just I do feel – how many losses that. did – did three regular season losses versus did USC – USC lost once and they lost in the conference championship when Technically, you could have compared it to a guy like C.J. Stroud who did make the playoff or Stetson Bennett who made the playoff. Mm -hmm. Also, but you I think, think it's just her. because – Jaden Daniels. I think they. Dark. I think they were. He has one far and away like, different. The ball game doesn't count for Heisman. Though. It won't count. And also, I think Caleb Williams. They, they see him as like a generational ball. player. So many yeah. players don't play in ball games. I mean, uh, unless Jaden. And also, not everyone. But like, I don't know. I do. I like still don't know. It's a really. It's. I think it's the same argument that you have as the committee when you're looking at the college football playoff. Do you? Do you reward winning or maybe the better player or yeah. the better? I personally player. and think also I think Jaden Daniels is way more exciting to watch. I, so. Yeah, yeah, but that that so doesn't always. Penix at the start of the year was the most fun quarterback to watch. Oh, oh, oh he's yeah. fallen off. I think honestly, Penix is fourth right now. Behind, I think Marvin Harrison still has a case to be third. I think Malik Neighbors should really be third, but we're I gonna think put Harrison there. So to, to like say on that because I've been the one that's uh, I brought up earlier at least before the show. I think Malik Neighbors. Is the best wide receiver right now. I think he should win the Blitnik call. He's deserving of the Blitnik call. I was yes. shocked they didn't. Um, a semifinalist that wasn't on there was Troy Franklin. He has 200 more yards and I think 20 more receptions. Who are the three semifinalists for the It's Blitnik Marvin Austin. Harrison. Yeah, Mazzari Marvin. Malik Neighbors. Yeah. And um, Rome. Ad Ad Rome. Oh, yeah, yeah, Rome. Yeah, yeah, And yeah, to yeah. be honest, I think Marvin Harrison is overrated this year specifically. He's still had a fantastic season. Yeah. He has that no, yeah. He's the only I, reason Ohio State's they, won some yeah. games. I, Kyle McCord is not winning you games. Yeah, they said yeah. Kyle McCord's been bad, but I'm like, he's at least getting in the ball. And, I mean, there's also a – Yet yeah. again, put Griffin out. I could – He'll yeah. get Marvin Harrison the ball. But I still don't think that if you have 1,200 yards and someone else has 1,400, there is no reason that yeah. Marvin Harrison, because of his – Because no matter – and also, he's um, he's an amazing player. It's just this year, I mean, it – it didn't work out for him. Yeah, it, is good. it didn't work out for him. I'm just shocked. That like the stats aren't as good. He's an yeah. amazing. He's the best. He's the best wide receiver in college football. I think this might be. It's just, just this overall season, it doesn't one of the toughest years to make any decision of, for anything. For yeah, anything. yeah, for any postseason award. Yeah. Because there's not that far and away better team. Like I, yeah. these teams or are far and away better. These players. teams are just simply not yeah. as good as some of the past college football. And teams. also, I don't think they're just the all players. really good. Are they all stack up to each other. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. also yeah. an argument. It's a larger pool of good. Teams. An argument you could make against Jaden Daniels is that even though he's like. Like an amazing player on that offense. I mean, he has Malik Neighbors and Brian Thomas, who Brian Thomas also had like what 15, 17 touchdowns. And he has this season. Games. Yeah, He's exactly. Really good running so they he has two amazing receivers, which they could also argue against. So I feel like it's just a toss. The up only argue with that though. I mean, Bonex has a bit of everything. The only other thing yeah. is that everything, but every everywhere, everywhere, everywhere on Oregon, Oregon, Oregon is offense. Every well no, yeah, 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 might have the best. Every record. Heisman candidate semifinalist mm -hmm. that's a quarterback. Has first round talent around him. Troy Franklin, who like arguably first round talent. Troy Franklin, yeah. yeah. Um, that's for Oregon. I can't remember the other one. I mean, he has a lot of talent. We all know Oregon's really yeah. good. Bo Oregon is just his own line. Probably the best all around. Uh, Bo Irving or whatever his name. I can't remember yeah. the running back. Yep. You look at Michael Penix. Oh, yeah, he has yeah. Roma Dunze and Jalen Polk and I think another good, really good wide receiver plus a decent, a decent running back. Decent. I think decent wide receiver, decent, decent running back. Decent. So you look at all yeah. these teams and they have no Heisman this year. Is gonna there's gonna, not gonna be any highs unless the Boise State quarterback wins it. That's not gonna have first round talent <laughs> yeah. around them. Yeah. So I think you can't really rely on, you can't really. 
Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't make that argument, but I just yeah, am saying. It's the CFP. They're going to make that yeah. argument. I just, I don't know. It's just with that, and on top of that, those receivers, they have great talent. But if you can't have a quarterback like Marvin Harrison Jr., obviously he's not up for Heisman right exactly. now. At least not really in talks because his because, quarterback. Because, yeah. So if and he Ryan had Day. a Jaden Daniels, would Marvin Harrison mm-hmm. be another Devontae Smith and win? Because what you got, Griffin? So that's what what do you have, G Funk? Um, I mean, yeah, I was just because we are pre- approaching the hour mark, so I was just going to cut you off. Um, but yeah, I think I think it would be Daniels. Stats don't lie. Um, I don't think wins wins really matter. Um, he's been the best in the air and on the ground as a quarterback. Um, he's contributed a lot to LSU's success. If LSU had any sort of defense, I think LSU could be in the SEC championship. I think they could have yeah. dethroned Alabama. But, um, you know, that's all. That's just going to be a what-if situation. But like Toby said, it's, it's probably one of the toughest years to make decisions in the college football world, whether it be Heisman, whether it be playoff, whether it be the top 25 as a whole, or maybe even bowl games. But um, just because we are approaching the hour mark, that is going to do it for us for this episode of The Extra Point next week. We'll be talking about bowl games. We'll be talking about the official four that make the playoff, maybe a little bit more Heisman. And, of course, we got the Army-Navy game, so stay tuned for that next week. But besides that, that's going to do it for us today. We'll see you later.